Good day, let's go over fractions and mixed fractions. Um, so the easiest operation to do with fractions is multiplying. And to multiply fractions, you basically just multiply them straight across top and bottom. So for this, the top two times three is six and the bottom five times seven is 35. So our answer is six over 35. Okay, the next operation is dividing fractions. Pretty simple. To divide fractions, first you have to invert the second fraction and change the division to a multiplication sign. So here we have 3 over 5 times 7 over 6. And then just go as normal. So 3 times 7 is 21. 5 times 6 is 30. So our final answer is 21 over 30. Now we could reduce this even further. Um, we see we could divide both of these by 3. So 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 30 divided by 3 is 10. So we get our answer as 7 over 10. Okay, adding fractions. If you notice that the denominators are both the same, in this case the number 5, you could go ahead and add straight across. So our answer here is 3 fifths. Now, if the denominators are not similar, in this case, 7 and 8, what we're going to do is we're going to do our vertically and crosswise from our Vedic Maths word formula, vertically and crosswise. Uh, what we do is we multiply 3 times 8, then we add 5 times 7. So that's going to be our numerator. 3 times 8 plus 5 times 7. Our denominator, we simply multiply straight across. So 7 times 8 is 56. So 3 times 8, that gives us 24, plus 5 times 7 is 35 over 56. 24 and 35 gives us 59. So we're going to say this is 59 over 56. Now we could, uh, we could change this into a mixed fraction because you could see that in this case it's top heavy. So we're going to go ahead and say how many times can 56 go into 59 well we know 56 goes into 59 one times with three left over so three over 56 so our answer is one and three fifty sixth. okay once again uh, we're going to use vertically and crosswise here so we're going to say two times five plus one times three for our numerator so 2 times 5 plus 1 times 3. Our denominator, we multiply straight across. 3 times 5 gives us 15. So we have 10 plus 3. That equals 13 over 15 for our answer as 13 fifteenths. Okay, same kind of thing. If we're subtracting fractions, we're going to do vertically and crosswise because our denominators are dissimilar. So we're going to say 3 times 9 minus 1 times 8. So 3 times 9 minus 1 times 8. That's going to be our numerator. So 3 times 9 minus 1 times 8. Our denominator straight across. 8 times 9 gives us 72. So 3 times 9 is 27. 1 times 8 is 8. 27 minus 8 gives us 19 over 72. For our answer, 19 over 72. Okay, let's do another one with subtraction, 3 sevenths minus 9 tenths. So we do our vertically and crosswise, 3 times 10 minus 9 times 7 for our numerator. So 3 times 10 minus 9 times 7. Our denominator, 7 times 10 is 70. So we have 30 minus 63 over 70. Now you notice that we're going to have a negative number. So 30 minus 63 gives us a negative 33 over 70. Our answer is negative 33 seventieths. An easy way to do uh, negative numbers, let's say I have 30 minus 63, is you could just say 63 minus 30 and then tack negative sign in front of it. So that's basically the way that works is just subtract the, the smaller number from the bigger and then tack on a negative sign uh, once you're done. Okay, let's add mixed fractions. 
first thing we want to do is add the whole numbers. So 1 plus 3, that gives us 4. Next, we're going to add the fraction portion using vertically and crosswise. So 2 times 5 plus 4 times 3. So that's going to be 10 plus 12. That gives us 22. For our denominator, 5 times 3 is 15. Now, you notice that here we have a top-heavy fraction. So we need to convert this portion of it into a mixed fraction and then add it on to the whole number. So 15 goes into 22 one times, and then 22 minus 15 is seven. So 22 over 15 gives us one and seven fifteenths. We're gonna add this onto our whole number. So our final answer is five and seven fifteenths. Okay, subtracting mixed fractions, same kind of thing. We start with the whole numbers. So 6 minus 3 gives us a positive 3. Then vertically and crosswise with the fractions. So 7 times 3 minus 2 times 8. So 21 minus 16 gives us a positive 5. 21 minus 16 is 5. And then 8 times 3 is 24. So our final answer equals 3 and 5 24 Okay, I'd like to show you what happens when your whole number is negative and your fractions are uh, positive or negative. So first thing we do is we subtract the whole numbers. 2 minus 5 gives us a negative 3. Then we do our vertically and crosswise. So 5 times 4 minus 3 times 6. So 20 minus 18 gives us a positive 2. So we're going to say plus 2. And 6 times 4 gives us 24. So what we're saying here is that we have a negative number for our whole number, but a positive number for our fraction. So what we need to do is we kind of need to borrow. Easiest way to do this is to reduce by one. So we have negative two. And then we're gonna say 24 minus two. It gives us 22 over 24. Um, for our final answer, we could reduce further. So we're gonna say that equals negative two and 11 twelfths. For our final answer, negative two and 11 twelfths. So basically, if you have a number line, and let's say this is the number 0, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is negative 3. We did our whole numbers. We got a negative 3, but then we got a positive for our fraction portion. So that means that we have to add this way. We have to add um, 2 24 ths. So basically, to do that, you just borrow 1. Easiest way to do this, like I said is just subtract 24 minus 2. That gives you 22 for the numerator, and then the denominator stays the same as 24. Okay, here we have a situation where the whole number is positive, but the fractions are negative. So 6 minus 3 gives us a positive 3, and then we do our vertically and crosswise. So 2 times 7 minus 4 times 5. So 14 minus 20 gives us a negative 6. 14 minus 20 is negative 6. So we're saying negative 6 over 35. So here we have a positive whole number and a negative fraction. Easiest way to fix this is to reduce the whole number by 1. Then we just say 35 minus 6 gives us 29 over 35. Our final answer as 2 and 29 35ths. Okay, so here we go. 2 minus 4 gives us a negative 2. And then our vertically and crosswise, 1 times 7 minus 2 times 5. So 7 minus 10 gives us a negative 3 and 35 for our denominator. So now we're saying that the whole number and the fraction are both negative. So the entire thing is negative. So we're going to say our answer is negative 2 and 3 35ths. So basically, you have your number line. Here's the number 0. Here's negative 1. Here's negative 2. We're saying that our whole number is negative 2, and our fraction is negative 3 35ths. So our entire thing is negative. Our entire fraction is negative. Okay, when multiplying mixed fractions, first you want to turn them into top-heavy fractions. So to do that, we say 7 times 1 plus 1. It gives us 8 
our denominator remains the same, times 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17, 17 over 5, and then proceed as normal, so you just multiply straight across, so 8 times 17, you got 80 and 56, so that's 136 over 35. So then we need to go ahead and put this back into a mixed fraction. So 35 goes into 136 three times. So 3 times 35 equals 105. So then I'm going to say 136, 136 minus 105 equals 31. So 31 35ths. So 3 and 31 35ths as our final answer. Okay, same thing when dividing mixed fractions. First, we want to turn them into top-heavy fractions. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So we have 9 fourths divided by 3 times 5 is 15 plus 1 is 16. So 16 fifths. Then we want to go ahead and turn that into a multiplication problem. So 9 fourths times 5 sixteenths. So we get our answer as 45 over 4 times 16 is 40 and 24 is 64. So 45 sixty-fourths. Okay, real quickly, I want to talk to you when to reduce and when not to reduce. So when you could reduce is when it's being multiplied. So let's say you have 3 eighths and you're multiplying it by 5 ninths. Um, you could reduce across fractions this way, the 3 and the 9. So you could say 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and then proceed as normal. So we get our answer as 5 24ths. Um, same thing with division. Let's say you have uh, 4 ninths divided by, um, I don't know, 5 twelfths. So first you convert to a multiplication. And then you could go ahead and reduce. So I could reduce this 9 and this 12. So 9 divided by 3 gives us 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we get our answer as 16 fifteenths or 1 and 1 fifteenth. Okay, that's when you could reduce across fractions. When I'm saying reduce and not reduce, I'm talking about across fractions. Um, you could always reduce a fraction if it's by itself. Let's say 4 sixteenths plus 1 fifth. Um, you could go ahead and reduce this 4 sixteenths. Okay, you could reduce each one of those by 4. Um, so when you when you don't want to reduce is um, if across fractions. What I mean by reduce across fractions is when they're being added or subtracted. So let's say you have one fourth plus um, six sevenths. Now I can't reduce across this plus sign. Okay, I can't reduce these two fractions across each other uh, with the plus sign. Same with subtraction. You know, if I have one fourth minus six sevenths, I can't reduce across this. Um, like I said earlier, if you have a fraction uh, just by itself, you could reduce any individual fraction, but do not uh, reduce across a plus or a minus sign. Um, it's okay to reduce across a multiplication or division, um, just don't reduce across these plus or minus signs. Okay, let's talk about comparing fractions. So to compare fractions is pretty simple. You're just going to subtract one from the other um, and see if you get a negative or positive number. Um, ba basically, the way this works is let's say I say 5 minus 2, that equals 3. So I got a positive number out, right? I got a positive 3. Therefore, I know the 5 is bigger. I know the first number is bigger. Um, but let's say I do 6 minus 9, I get a negative 3. Uh, if I get a negative number as a result, then I know the second number is greater. So we're going to use this concept with fractions because you can't see right off the bat which one's bigger or smaller. So we're just going to subtract one fraction from the other and see if we get a negative or positive. So to do this, we're going to do our vertically and crosswise. So we're going to say 2 times 8 minus 3 times 7. So 16 minus 21 
16 minus 21 is a negative 5. So we know that we got a negative, we're going to get a negative number no matter what the denominator is. Uh, we know we get a negative number. So if we get a negative number, that means that the second fraction is greater than the first fraction. Because we subtracted the second fraction from the first, we got a negative number. That means that the second fraction must be greater. So we could go ahead and say 3 eighths is greater than 2 sevenths. Okay, if you need to compare three fractions, you just basically do the same thing um, at the most three times and at the least twice. Uh, so here we go. We're just going to do, first we're just going to compare these first two fractions. So we're going to say uh, 2 times 10 minus 9 times 7. So 20 minus 63, that's a negative number. 20 minus 63 is a negative number. So we know 7 tenths is greater than 2 ninths. So we could go ahead and say 2 ninths is less than 7 tenths. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and compare these two fractions. So we're going to say 7 times 8 minus 3 times 10. So 7 times 8 is 56 minus 30 is a positive number. So we know that 7 tenths is greater than 3 eighths. So we're going to say 7 tenths is greater than 3 eighths. And then we see uh, uh, that obviously 7 tenths is the largest number because it's greater than both of these other fractions. So if we're putting them from least to greatest, we know that 7 tenths is going to be our greatest fraction. Um, and we, now we need to just find out which fraction is the smallest. So to do that, we compare the, uh, the only two that we haven't compared, which is the 2 ninths and the 3 eighths. So here we go, we say 2 times 8 minus 3 times 9. So 16 minus 27, uh, we know that's going to be a negative number. So that means that 3 eighths is greater than 2 ninths. So we're going to say 3 eighths is greater than 2 ninths. Therefore, we know that 2 ninths is the smallest and 3 eighths is in the middle. So there it is from least to greatest. Um, how to compare fractions. Okay, if you made it all the way through this video, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, please press the like button and leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns. If you like these type of videos and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.